Welcome back. You're still watching uh, the daily debate and uh, focusing on the visit of President Abdel Fattah Hassisi to France, more specifically Paris, and the International Conference on Libya. The participation of President Abdel Fattah Hassisi, the statements made during his visit, and uh, of course, Engineer Hassan Shaban, as we did see in the past report, the statements made uh, to the UNESCO speech as well uh, regarding the 75th anniversary of uh, the foundation of the UNESCO. What is the importance of uh, such an important international institution and the bilateral relations between Egypt and the UNESCO throughout history? Egypt enjoyed uh, a long uh, relations um, uh, with the, the UNESCO actually mm. and the UNESCO uh, as an organization actually participated in a lot of the uh, projects that uh, we see today yes. and the uh, UNESCO is uh, really have a white hand and uh, they actually assisted Egypt in uh, saving the uh, Pharaonic temples and uh, Abu Simbel temple uh, uh, a lot of uh, the uh, the Pharaonic and uh, you know historical uh, 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 things in, in Egypt were actually we received a lot of help from the UNESCO yeah. all along the way also, the UNESCO participated in a lot of programs in Egypt to, uh, to enhance culture and, you know, uh, I think the UNESCO is one of the most important uh, organizations in the United Nations that have, uh, that enjoys a good relationship with Egypt and uh, hopefully we will be able to, uh, you know, utilize this good relationship to uh, improve a lot of the uh, touristic locations that we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, especially after the coming events of mm. the El Kibash, uh, uh, you know, passage in yes. the passage and the and the uh, uh, Luxor, and uh, you know, uh, we expect a lot of cooperation after the uh, opening of inauguration of the. Uh, the Egyptian Museum, the new Egyptian Museum, all of these uh, will actually uh, increase the interest of the UNESCO to uh, invest in Egypt and, uh, you know, uh, shed light on the Egyptian uh, uh, history. Yes, focusing on the main topic for the episode for tonight, <clears throat> the participation of President Assisi in uh, the Paris International Conference on Libya. How do you see the importance of holding such a conference and the participation of His Excellency in uh, this conference. This, this uh, conference is very important. The timing is, is, is crucial actually because 40 days from today we will have uh, actually uh, uh, the first free elections uh, in the history, in the modern history of Libya. Uh, so uh, the, the timing is crucial. Uh, and uh, all of the parties that really got involved into this conference had an interest in securing the uh, election and, uh, uh, you know, keeping an eye on it to uh, secure uh, transparency and uh, neutrality of the, uh, the elections. Uh, also, also, the, uh, all of the parties that got involved into uh, this conference had an interest to have a, a program to withdraw all the foreign troops and the mercenary out of Libya before this elections. So all the foreign troops, all the mercenary, all of the, uh, the troops that actually existed on the Libyan soil for some time will have to leave Libya within the next 40 days in order to be able... Before the election. Definitely. Mm. Because to, so that, you know, uh, we can then assure the Libyan people that no foreign uh, intervention will be, uh, you know, will take place in the coming uh, elections. Mm. Uh, this is very important. Uh, I think uh, as of today, uh, some of the celebrities uh, in Libya applied for uh, these elections uh, as candidates for, uh, for the coming elections. Uh, 
on the top of the list of course uh, safe safe uh, safe al-islam al-qaddafi applied today uh, uh, as a, a candidate uh, for run, to run for presidency in in the coming elections uh, a number of leading figures uh, for actually, the presidential elections right. uh, i think uh, the, the whole thing will take place at the same time yes. uh, uh, I, uh, I think i have the right idea that the presidential elections as well the parliamentary elections will take place all at the same time mm. uh, hopefully uh, you know by the 24th of december we will see a new libya mm. so is he the main candidate in your opinion i have a uh, yes i i, I will uh, analyze the situation uh, so uh, though Saif al-Islam is the son of the late uh, Colonel uh, Gaddafi who actually ruled Libya for about 40 years yes. uh, of course there was mistakes during this 40 years uh, democracy uh, vanished and uh, though uh, Colonel Gaddafi thought that he was protecting the Libyans and the Libyan uh, wealth uh, by, by uh, behaving this way. Uh, but that was dictatorship. But right before uh, the uh, 2010, uh, Saif al-Islam Gaddafi uh, was, uh, came back to Libya after a, a long trip uh, in, uh, as a student in, uh, in England. Yes. And uh, he had a lot of very good plans to develop Libya and modernize Libya uh, in all uh, uh, aspects. Health, uh, there was a huge program to, to construct uh, about 60 uh, 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 hospitals, uh, me mega hospitals in Libya, about 26 new universities. Uh, a lot of projects uh, were actually started uh, right before the, uh, the, the chaos of uh, 2010 or 2011. Mm. Uh, I think uh, Saif al-Islam matured. He had a very bitter uh, experience during the last decade. And uh, I think he gained a lot of wisdom and uh, development uh, is not only by constructing roads and uh, you know hospitals and uh, universities it is also on the human side you really need a lot of freedom and democracy and this is i think uh, a fact today uh, that saif al-islam knows very well and i think he is a, uh, a loved candidate, but by a lot of uh, people in Libya. Uh, hopefully, what I'm saying uh, is truth, uh, uh, b because uh, uh, you know I don't want uh, the Libyans to have another disappointment. We cannot afford mm. another disappointment. Libya is a very dear country to us as Egyptians, and uh, hopefully. Uh, the coming era will be a, a prospect, uh, prosper uh, area. Of, I mean, uh, time for uh, for Libya. And uh, I think uh, uh, Saif al Islam will uh, probably have to form a coalition uh, in order for him to succeed, because uh, uh, the integrity of Libya and the sovereignty of Libya uh, was maintained by people like, for instance, uh, General Haftar, mm. who actually uh, uh, did very well. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, uh, presented a lot of sacrifices to, uh, to preserve the Libyan sovereignty. Mm. So I think uh, a lot of uh, very patriotic uh, uh, personnel will uh, show, and I think the Libyans will be able 
to, uh, to choose uh, the right candidate for the position. Uh, I think uh, the international community have a responsibility to observe and to control and to get out all the mercenary and the foreign troops out of Libya to, uh, to make sure that uh, you know, they will have free elections in, in, uh, on the 24th of December. Uh, some of the individuals uh, in Libya will try to uh, create problems and, uh, you Before know, the election, right. to be delaying it. Right. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, you know, uh, like yesterday or the day before yesterday, the Muslim Brotherhood actually uh, issued uh, a certain declaration that uh, uh, Saif al-Islam and, uh, and uh, General Haftar are responsible for certain uh, crimes, and, and this prevents them from uh, going into elections. But this uh, did not work out. So anyway, it's the same vicious scenario. Exactly, of the brotherhood, the organization. Uh, exactly, in every country. exactly. Mm. Uh, I, 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 you know, uh, honesty is is a, is a currency that you cannot really uh, uh, forge. Yes. So, uh, I think uh, safe al Islam might have a very good chance uh, uh, because he's got a lot of, uh, you know, uh, credit and uh, uh, he inherited uh, some of the bitter experiences that his father had and uh, I think he le learned the lesson very well and uh, I think he will serve the Libyan nation uh, better than anybody else. They wouldn't want to be repeating the same mistakes exactly, of exactly, the past. Exactly. Uh, mentioning the international community, you said that every country that participated in the conference, it has a certain interest in securing that the presidential and the parliamentary elections are going on, scheduled, uh, on schedule or on time. So what are the interests of France, Italy, Germany, to say the least. And Russia. And Russia. And the US. Mm. Well, uh, Italy has a certain, actually, uh, long, long history with, uh, with Libya. Yes. And, uh, you know, of course, at one time, uh, Italy occupied uh, Libya. And, uh, you know, but again, uh, there is definitely very strong ties between uh, Italy and Libya. And uh, Italy has uh, very uh, large investments in the oil and gas uh, industry mm. in, uh, in uh, Libya. Uh, and I think uh, the Italians or the Italian government uh, wants to actually secure uh, these investments and uh, matter of fact, uh, increase the, their share of investment in this particular field. Mm. Uh, uh, also, uh, the Americans have the, an interest uh, in, of course, in the same field. And a matter of fact, I think the uh, U.S. would like to increase uh, its presence in Libya and its share of investment in the oil and, and, and gas field. Putting in mind that uh, in spite of the fact that Libya is a major uh, oil producer, still uh, considered a virgin country when it comes to this. I think mm -hmm. Libya is a very wealthy country and uh, underneath the uh, Gulf of Sert, there might be the largest gas field in the world that this will uh, upset the gas market, because once Libya starts to produce its gas from this particular area, it definitely will provide Europe with uh, a gas cheaper than the Russian right. gas. Mm -hmm. So the Russians are there watching everything, so uh, they wouldn't really be mm -hmm. hurt. It's an, you know, a, a, you know, look for the economy. Mm -hmm. a, a politics actually reflects directly on the economy. So the Russians are there in Libya just to make sure that uh, in the future they will be there uh, in order to coordinate with the Libyans' prices and so forth. Uh, putting in mind also 
that uh, the Russians uh, did not really uh, support uh, Colonel Gaddafi, the Wagner, uh, the, the Wagner's uh, company, yes. did not really provide the required uh, cover and protection for uh, uh, Colonel Gaddafi. And uh, I think they have a guilty conscience and they're providing the, a, a better uh, protection now for safe Islam. I think the U.S. government also have an interest in safeguarding uh, safe Islam. Uh, this is why I'm saying he's probably a, a favorite uh, candidate in this uh, race, actually. On the other hand, the interests of uh, neighboring countries such as Egypt represented in His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi participating in the conference and stating that there needs to be unity and we need to be ending the um, conflicts between the uh, parties within Libya itself, uniting Libya and uh, ending the presence of the foreign interference or the presence of the foreign mercenaries and fighters on the ground in Libya. The interest of Egypt of having a secure, a stable and a safe Libya. Uh, I have to draw your attention to the fact that in Libya we have two armies right now. Mm. And the, uh, the group called 5 plus 5 yes. is working on, uh, you know, uniting the uh, Libyan army again. Uh, it's a main concern for us in Egypt to have a unified army that protects Libya from foreign uh, intervention and uh, uh, any uh, threats uh, that Libya could uh, be exposed to. Uh, we have to realize that we share a thousand kilometers. Mm. Uh, uh, this is uh, the length of our uh, borders with Libya. And this takes a lot of uh, attention to safeguard uh, this border from, uh, you know, uh, infiltrating to our uh, soil. Uh, we have to realize also that at one time there was not less than 28,000 uh, ISIS individuals in the south of Libya mobilized from uh, the north of Iraq and north of Syria across Turkey all the way to Mauritania from Mauritania uh, uh, all the way to the south of Libya waiting and standing by uh, God knows for what but you know Egypt was very alert to observe uh, uh, you know uh, these troops actually Hopefully, uh, in the near future, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the coming period will uh, resolve this matter as well. And all these mercenaries will go back home where they belong. What is the 5 plus 5 Joint Military Commission? What is the task of it? Uh, the task of 5 plus 5 is to make sure that Libyans do not fight Libyans. Mm. Uh, the, the second task is to try to find a common ground to unify the Libyan army one more time. Uh, I, I think once the Libyan army is unified, uh, we will see a completely different issue. Libya requires a good constitution, a good parliament, a good army, and a, a, a sincere and honest president and prime minister. Uh, I think uh, five, five, 5 plus 5 is, uh, is just a temporary name for the Libyan army, the coming mm. Libyan army. Uh, once the uh, troops that, uh, heads, that is headed by uh, General Haftar will join the troops uh, in the west, in around Tripoli. Once the Turkish troops leave, I think it will be very easy for the Libyans to, uh, to join troops again. Can this unity be achieved before the elections, the parliamentary and the presidential elections, or they need a president, they need a parliament to be achieving this unity? Uh, hopefully they could do that, but again, Again, you, you have to realize that uh, one of the results of mm. having a new president, a new prime minister, and a new parliament is automatically they're going to have a new army. Mm. Uh, General Haftar made an, a declaration 
uh, about 48 hours ago yes. that the Libyan army will support any free and transparent and neutral elections. Mm. We require this as, an, as a Libyan army. So that was a very good uh, declaration. And uh, it, it means, you know, uh, that uh, once we have uh, uh, free elections that will produce uh, a, a, a president that all the Libyans will, you know, vote for, uh, this means that automatically uh, there is no point in having two armies, one in the east, one in the west. Hmm. Uh, I have also, I, I forgot to tell you that uh, Saif al-Islam uh, made a declaration today also hmm. that is very wise, and I really uh, respect this and raise the hat for it. He declared that uh, there is a pardon, a general pardon, uh, for all the political uh, individuals and personnel since uh, uh, 1st of September 1969, mm. which is the, the date of the revolution of his father, mm. till the day that he will be elected. His lawyers actually were working on this uh, pardon, and this actually will, uh, you know, uh, uh, relax the, the tension in uh, in you know the uh, uh, in, in the Libyans among the Libyans. Yes, one of the main statements of uh, President Assisi during his participation in this conference is that uh, we need to be getting the foreign mercenaries, the foreign fighters, the foreign intervention out of uh, Libya, and they entered Libya ever since 2011. That's yes. about 10 years, a decade. And you mentioned that this could be happening in the next. 40 days. Can this be implemented in the space of 40 days? Uh, even if it was not implemented, but I think uh, the, uh, the United Nations mm. or the European uh, uh, you know, community could provide troops to supervise the gradual withdrawal of these troops mm. uh, to their own uh, uh, motherland. Yes. Uh, I think uh, if we have a will, there will be a way, unless unless the, we are sincere in you know in getting all the mercenaries. Because actually, this person is actually uh, is they're even doing it. Actually, uh, Libya doesn't really require all this uh, armament, and uh, mm. uh, we actually feel that we are being threatened mm. by these. Uh, foreign troops, and we don't want to get involved in uh, in, a, in, a, in a, even a limited war with these troops if the international community will be able to uh, resolve this matter. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we follow a very wise, uh, you know, policy. You'd have to remember uh, the declaration of President uh, Sisi when he said the Gufra cert is a red, a red line, line. Yeah. and uh, yes, uh, I think we, we, we actually observe matters and uh, uh, we keep an eye on everything. Uh, uh, definitely we have you know, a lot of influence in Libya because the old and uh, long history between Egypt and Libya. Libyans are our brothers actually, whether we like it or not, yes. uh, and we're, we're connected with the Libyans uh, you know, uh, for decades, actually. If there is an intention, a serious intention by the United Nations, by the international institutions to be withdrawing those forces, but the countries that send them, do they have the same commitment, in your opinion? I think they have, they w could be forced to withdraw. I mean, uh, if, uh, if the international community and the United Nations uh, will vote to withdraw the, the, these troops, for instance, the Turkish groups. Mm. Uh, that was uh, an agreement between uh, Faiz al sarraj and uh, the Turkish uh, government at, at one time. But once the international community will say his word on this, and uh, the Libyans as well uh, will probably uh, uh, ask for that, uh, there is no point in waiting for the new parliament to vote on cancelling the agreement between 
Libya and Turkey because there is an agreement actually, a signed agreement between Libya and Turkey. So uh, why wait to, uh, for the parliament to, uh, to vote on cancelling uh, this agreement if the international community thinks that this threatens the sovereignty and the uh, integrity of the Libyan country. We have witnessed uh, the Berlin conference on uh, Libya as well a couple of years ago. So what is the progress that was made and achieved between the Berlin conference and the Paris conference in the space of two years? Uh, I think the amount of violence uh, was reduced, definitely. Uh, I think uh, the 5 plus 5 uh, was a result of the uh, Berlin um, uh, conference. Uh, the Sukhairat also uh, conference was a very fruitful mm. uh, uh, you know, conference. I think the Cairo recently, recently yes. was a conference in Cairo that helped uh, the 5 plus 5 uh, because, you know, um, the military speak the same language and I think uh, there is no doubt uh, that both sides, each of the two fives is patriotic and they love their country and I think they mean well. I don't think mm -hmm. that, uh, that they are irresponsible, that they um, are fully aware of the responsibility that lies on their shoulders to unify the Libyan army. How do you weigh the efforts of Egypt under the tenure of President Assisi specifically to be coming to this phase of having a parliament in Libya, of having a presidential election in Libya, of having a president in Libya? How do you see those efforts in the past six or seven years? Well, I actually, uh, there is definitely a lot of wisdom mm. and, uh, 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 you know, a lot of self-control. Uh, uh, in our foreign policy. Uh, we're not really going to slip into uh, conflicts if we could resolve it by uh, other means or peaceful means. Uh, definitely, uh, President Sisi exerted a lot of efforts mm. in the last uh, uh, three, four years to, uh, to host uh, a lot of the conferences that took place between the Libyans. Uh, we enjoy excellent relations with uh, for the, the uh, present uh, Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Abdel Hamid al uh, You know, uh, we enjoy also excellent relations with the head of the parliament. Uh, so uh, I think uh, we have uh, uh, channels to communicate with the Libyans, and uh, definitely uh, we are. Uh, very keen on uh, uh, Libyans uh, gaining their uh, full control over their country and one more uh, time we have you know united Libya uh, one more time. Yes mentioning a united Libya President Assisi also uh, focused on this theme to be having uh, no internal disagreements between the Libyans themselves how far have they come in terms of having those elections that they say to the world that we have no internal disagreements now? Well, you see, the problem with, uh, in Libya is the tribal, uh, mm. uh, you know... Uh, system or community. System, yes, mm. in Libya. And unless the Libyans will realize that this works against them, I mean, uh, uh, nobody will be able to work on its own. Mm. Uh, the country will have you know, to run as one uh, entity. Yes. So, uh, uh, you know, during the era of the King Idris uh, Sunusi, you know, Libya enjoyed a, a confederation, you know, between the, uh, the East, West and the South. And I don't think that this uh, could be repeated again, but it, it is not to anybody's favor, actually. Mm -hmm. But again, I think after the 24th of December, the wealth and, uh, uh, you know, the Libyan wealth will be divided uh, uh, even uh, in an even way and uh, uh, between all the uh, Libyans and East will develop as well as the West and the South. Uh, uh, in the past, uh, uh, the West was, took the biggest share of the Libyan wealth to develop 
if there was any development because in the era of uh, mm. Colonel Gaddafi uh, there was no really uh, development plans till as I said uh, Saif al-Islam came back and uh, he convinced his father to give him certain space to operate and uh, he had a remarkable uh, effect on the uh, on this uh, uh, but again uh, I think uh, Libya requires a good uh, economical system, uh, a good uh, development, a sustainable development program, uh, and a human resources mm. development program as well. Yes, we'll be focusing on uh, the presidential activities of President Abdel Fattah Hassisi in France in terms of participating in the International Paris Conference on Libya. And on the sidelines of uh, this conference, President Hassisi held several meetings with the French President Emmanuel Macron, the French Prime Minister uh, John Castex, and uh, the French Minister of Defense Florence Pali will be having more details in the upcoming report. President Afet Hassisi held talks at the Elysee Palace in Paris on Friday with French President Emmanuel Macron. President Sisi also held separate talks with Prime Minister Jean Castex, Minister of Economy and Finance Bruno Le Maire, and Minister of the Armed Forces of France Florence Parly. President Sisi's meetings with French officials came on the sidelines of his visit to Paris to participate in international conference on Libya. Presidential spokesperson Bassem Rodi said that the meeting between President Sisi and Macron discussed cooperation between the two countries in the railway sectors, the localization of the electric car industry the development of ports, civil aviation, energy, water treatment, infrastructure and tourism. President Macron affirmed France's keenness to support Egypt's measures to advance its economy and achieve comprehensive development, especially by increasing investments, transferring expertise and technology, and settling French industry, taking into account the praises of international economic institutions regarding the Egyptian economy's performance. Welcome back. Uh, Engineer Hassan Chaban, uh, focusing on the Egyptian-French bilateral relations as President Assisi, uh, we did see the meetings of President Assisi with uh, the French counterpart, with the French Prime Minister, with the French Economy and Finance Minister. Right. Uh, all those meetings, how do you see the bilateral ties between Egypt and France now? Well, we, we enjoy excellent relations with France right now, actually, mm. and uh, in all aspects, actually. Yes. Uh, starting with military cooperation, mm. uh, we have uh, common maneuvers in the Mediterranean and uh, uh, the Red Sea. Uh, also, definitely uh, France is a very active uh, country in investing in the field of gas and oil in Egypt uh, uh, through uh, French uh, companies. Uh, also, the uh, cultural relations between Egypt and France is excellent, actually. Mm. Uh, France is always interested in uh, Egyptology and uh, you know the uh, old history of Egypt and uh, uh, definitely both countries are benefiting a lot uh, from this relation. Mm -hmm. uh, focusing on the economy, uh, you've mentioned that everything is oriented towards the economy and money and even politics is the other face of uh, the economy. How do you see the progress that Egypt has made not just with France but to be attracting investments from all over Europe now with uh, the infrastructure revolution that we have in the country. Well definitely we're, we're, we're doing very well when it comes to uh, we enjoy excellent relations uh, worldwide we do not have really uh, an enemy yes uh, even even when we were exposed to a threat uh, we actually did not uh, go into uh, 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 a violent, uh, uh, you know, settlement. Mm. Uh, we've always uh, had a lot of wisdom, and we earned the uh, respect of the international community to the, uh, for this uh, attitude. Yes. Uh, we definitely have excellent relations with all the European uh, countries. Uh, of course, with uh, with the U.S., uh, our natural and long-term uh, ally. We 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 actually work together and we're uh, 
uh, we are working hard to regain stability and peace in the Middle East. Uh, of course, Russia was an old partner for us. So actually, uh, we are managing to, uh, to have excellent relations with all the parties and not getting into uh, a, a political bind where we have to, uh, to you know, settle for anything that we do not really uh, appreciate uh, politically. So uh, we have a politics that have a very positive return on economy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if uh, the politics does not have a, a positive return on economy, it's not a good politics, it's a failure. Yeah. But definitely our uh, politics have a good return and it reflects on our economy. Returning to Libya, what is the stability of Libya, the importance of the stability and security of Libya, not just for Egypt, but for the region and for Europe? You see, Libya was a window that uh, for illegal migration for some time, and this actually, uh, you know, was not uh, very much appreciated by the uh, the Europeans. Uh, also, uh, Libya uh, at one time and still uh, a, a ground for terrorist activities in the south, uh, where all the African uh, radical uh, uh, groups actually. Uh, get into the south of Chad and Libya and uh, due to lack of security for you know Libya is a very large country it's, it's, it's almost twice as large as Egypt so mm. uh, it requires a lot of effort to observe any uh, hostile uh, movement in the south so uh, actually once uh, Libya regains stability uh, I think Libya and Egypt will be able to cooperate to annihilate uh, completely uh, terrorist uh, activities in the south of Libya, which threats us uh, as Egyptians. Uh, also, uh, once uh, Libya is back to normal, I think the whole of North Africa will enjoy a lot of prosperity uh, because uh, uh, Libya, Algeria, Tunisia, and Morocco uh, even Mauritania, mm -hmm. uh, they're all actually countries have good potentials and uh, even us in Egypt, uh, we could actually being part of North Africa and enjoy our uh, special location in Africa, uh, we could all of us have, uh, a, you know, a very ambitious program for a, like a common market like s similar to what the Europe had for some time yes. and that could develop to another uh, thing. Also, I remember about uh, two, three years ago that President Sisi uh, asked uh, if you know we could form a, uh, a common army or a common troop similar to the NATO, but uh, you know takes care of the security up to the equator, uh, you know Egypt and, and, and you know the rest of the North African countries could be responsible for the security and the integrity of uh, North Africa by having a uh, like an ally or a common troops uh, financed by rich countries like Libya and Algeria. Uh, and this will actually reduce the impact on uh, the expenses of maintaining a strong army in Egypt, for instance, uh, you know, sharing the cost of maintaining a sophisticated and modern uh, troops uh, that secures the North Africa countries uh, will be a very beneficial uh, idea for all these countries, which I think uh, President Sisi at one time asked for in the Middle East, but I think it could be more feasible in the, to start with in the, in the North of Africa. Through your contacts with the, the Libyan citizens within the North African country, are they ready for the parliamentary and the presidential elections, or there is a sense of uh, th this could be delayed once again? Of course, there is certain doubts. Mm. They do not believe that the, the nightmare is almost over. <laughs> uh, uh, but they're all, all my friends and, and mm. contacts in Libya are very eager to see uh, one more time a unified Libya, a unified army, uh, a unified parliament, uh, 
if, if free elections, uh, you know, uh, a, a, an elected prime minister, and uh, of course, an elected president for Libya. There Definitely is, no. There is a United Nations arms embargo as well on Libya that was implemented for the past several years, and Cairo is calling for the lifting of uh, this ban to be building a strong army. Do you see this changing anytime soon after the elections? Definitely. I think once uh, uh, the, uh, the Libyans regain their stability, I think it will be their right to have a modern uh, army uh, very well equipped. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't think Libya have any uh, hostile intentions toward uh, their neighbors. The whole idea is to maintain the sovereignty uh, and integrity of the Libyan people. Yes, and finally, how do you see the future of Libya and the future of the bilateral relations between Egypt and Libya after the elections? Of course, I'm optimistic. Um, I hope that Libya uh, will uh, finally uh, reach peace and uh, all the wealth uh, of the Libyan uh, uh, people will benefit the Libyans. Uh, and uh, uh, I hope to see strong uh, Libya. Uh, and I would like to see a good, ambitious, uh, sustainable development program in Libya. Uh, there is a lot of uh, common projects that we could uh, share uh, with Libya. Uh, I remember some time ago, uh, Egypt even and, and Japan financed a study to have a huge project to connect the mm -hmm. River Congo to Libya. Mm -hmm. And I hope if, if everything goes well, Libya can afford uh, in a similar way to what they've done with the Great River that they had, they can afford to have this project. Uh, you know, it's a common project that gets Egypt and Libya together. We need a lot of water to, to develop our western desert. The Libyans, uh, ha you know, their desert is an extension uh, to our desert. And I think uh, hopefully, uh, uh, you know, the coming uh, era we'll see a lot of uh, merging and uh, uh, getting together because uh, Libya and Egypt is, to me, mm -hmm. uh, Libya is my second home. And, uh, and I think uh, uh, Libya and Egypt, if they manage to coordinate, uh, they will benefit from one another, actually. Yes, uh, Engineer Hassan Shaban, the former assistant for the chairman of LOF, the party, and the political analyst. Thank you very much for being with us tonight on the Thank Daily Debate. Thank you for inviting me. Appreciate it. Anytime. And this brings us to the end of the Daily Debate for tonight. Thank you for watching and goodbye.